Welcome back. President Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy striking an agreement over the weekend to raise the debt ceiling while capping and cutting some spending in the coming years. The House expected to vote on this bill tomorrow, both just under the wire on Janet Yellen's new default deadline on June 5th, both meaning the House and the Senate. Joining me right now is entrepreneur and 2024 presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. He's also the author of the book, Capitalist Punishment, How Wall Street is Using Your Money to Create a Country You Did Not Vote For. Vivek, great to see you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. It's good to see you, Maria. How are you? Good. First thing I want to ask you is about this debt ceiling uh, vote. You said you would not vote for it. That's right. I think that the steps are too incrementally forward. We still have a spending crisis in this country. The point of these negotiations should be to actually address the fiscal crisis, not to window dress around it. You want to take the funding for the IRS, moving it from 80 billion to 70 billion while still leaving the hit squad intact. That doesn't really change anything. Work requirements for Medicaid recipients, the Inflation Reductions Act's pork fest for clean energy tax credits. None of that's really changed. And so, Maria, I think there was an opportunity to go much further. I think we have to think on the timescales of history rather than the timescales of two-year election cycles. I think Republicans have the power to do it. And if I were in Congress, that's why I know it's a difficult thing to say, but I would hold the line, vote against it, and actually stick to fixing the real problems we have rather than applying lipstick. Well, I love your long term thinking. Two years is not a way to run the country through election cycles. But Vivek, let's not forget you need a willing partner in the White House. I mean, Kevin McCarthy was able to wrangle Joe Biden to agree to as spending cuts when for months he was going on and on. Biden was that he wants a clean debt ceiling. There's no strings attached, period. He's changed his tune because of the pressure from Republicans. Well, to be clear, Maria, I'm not criticizing Kevin McCarthy. That is why I'm running for the U.S. presidency, because absolutely we need someone in the White House that's, again, thinking on those timescales of history. We need to be thinking about a combination of not just spending cuts, but economic growth, GDP growth in this country, something that neither major party, Maria, is really talking about right now. But I do think that attaching those work requirements, say, to Medicaid, that begins to address one of the obstacles to GDP growth in this country as well. Not only does that address the spending issues, it also puts people back to work because that's the number one obstacle to GDP growth in America today, businesses finding actually people who can staff the unemployed ranks or the or the unfilled jobs in their ranks as well. So this is why I'm running for the presidency to help deliver economic growth of a kind that we haven't had in a long time, Maria. And I think now's our well, moment to deliver it. You make a, such an important point. Vivek, I say this all the time. There is no growth plan out of this administration. I mean, we are talking about an economy that is slowing and slowing fast. We may very well see a recession later on in the year. And yet they're still keeping up with their spending plans, with they, they, their uh, comments that they want to raise taxes, all things that are against any growth in the economy. Why? You're dead on. You're dead on correct. And this is, this is doable at the moment we live in. Let's unlock American energy, drill, frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear, stop pe paying people to stay back at home. Tax cuts do spur growth. Reform the Federal Reserve. Focus on stabilizing the dollar. These are things we can do, Maria, that in my opinion and in our economic plan, for my plan for the presidency, would put us back to over four plus percent GDP growth in this country. By the way, we've grown at over four percent for most of our national history. I think it can be so again. And I think that neither Republicans nor Democrats are talking enough about growth, instead thinking about the short run of how to increase this debt ceiling so that we can kick the can down the road two years. I think we need to yeah. address the fiscal problems, both on the spending side, but in ways that can actually deliver economic growth. And I'm optimistic that with the right policies from energy to pro-work policies, we can actually do it. It's a big part of my platform. And, and you wrote an op-ed for the New York Post after visiting Chicago's South Side called Why My GOP Competitors Should Take My Lead and Visit America's Inner Cities. You're watching the crime in real time. Tell us more. So, look, I want to take America first to the next level, Maria. And part of that means bringing all Americans and including all Americans in America first. I went to the South Side of Chicago where many Republicans Frankly, even many Democrats, some, even some police, I'm sad to say, do not go. 
What I found was a lot of common cause around issues like the border. We all agree that it is proper and legally and morally and ethically justified to use the military to secure the southern border, as I've said that I would do. And this is a community paying the price for that. South Shore High School now being converted into an encampment for illegal migrants, spending up to $7,000 per month per migrant. That's not just yeah. a conservative issue. That's an issue to people living on the south side of Chicago, too. So I'm encouraged, Maria, and the America First movement, we're going to find common cause, even in places where Republicans haven't traditionally gone. So we're traveling to inner cities across this country, and I think we're going to bring a lot of them along with us, not only in the general election, but in the national revival that's ahead of us. Well, Vivek, what about the corruption in plain sight? What about the collusion with social media uh, and, and the government? I mean, this is why Trump supporters, you know, get behind him because he is a fighter and wants to end this corruption and they don't want him to. LinkedIn claimed your account was locked in error last week. You were locked out of your account on LinkedIn. After you put a platform on blast, you were originally told, quote, your account was restricted for repeatedly sharing content that contains misleading or inaccurate information. Vivek, what went on here? I said, so <laughs> I said, I said some pretty blasphemous things, apparently, to LinkedIn among them. And they said exactly they pointed out the statement in the email. Fossil fuels are a requirement for human prosperity. That's one of the blasphemous things that I said. Another blasphemous thing was pointing out some of the ties between Biden and China. So they specifically pointed to that in multiple email exchanges. Later, they then apologized and bent the knee after I frankly embarrassed them by making that public. They said that it was just an error. We've seen that move before. But Maria, I want to put the finger on the pulse that you did, which is the corruption in the collusion between the government and private business to together do what neither can on its own. That is the problem. Frankly, I want to address that, take the solutions to the next level, even beyond what Trump did. Take that America First agenda even further. What I've said is that if it is state action in disguise, then the Constitution still applies. That if these companies are indirectly protected by the federal government, such as through Section 230C2, then they're bound by the same constraints as the government itself. That includes the First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. The irony, Maria, is I've been making these arguments for the last three years. Now they've come full circle to even censoring some of my political opinions as a Republican presidential candidate. But the good news is I refuse to stand by and watch it. I expose it. I stick to the facts. And that's how we win, not just versus LinkedIn, but at every step of the way in this debate. Well, here we go again with more election interference, potentially. I mean, LinkedIn trying to cut you off. You're running for president. It's eerily uh, similar to what we saw right before the presidential election, where uh, Twitter and others refused to report on the Biden laptop, which we all knew was real. So I do see this as a preview of coming attractions of what's coming. Viewpoint censorship on the Internet, especially by behemoth companies that are protected by the government, often responding to the suggestions of the government. That's exactly what's coming. And it's why I've gone to great lengths to point this out. And you want to think about it, Maria, even though LinkedIn is not one of the most popular networks for, for viewpoint expression. What are they saying? This is a network that people use to find their jobs. So if they're saying that you actually have to choose between speaking your mind openly and putting food on the dinner table, that's really sending a signal to everyday Americans. I'm fine. I've lived the full arc of the American dream. I'm running for U.S. president. I was able to publicly point this out and get that corrected so much so that they effectively apologize and call it an error. But imagine if this had happened to somebody else across the country. That is, they're not going to be able to enjoy that same luxury. And so what I see right now is the beginnings of planting the seeds for suppressing certain viewpoints ahead of the 2024 presidential election. And believe yeah. me, Maria, I'm running to not only win the primary, but win that general election in a landslide. I will not let them get away with it. You mark my words. All right, Vivek, it's great to get your take on all of this. We'll be watching Vivek Ramaswamy. Thank you, Vivek. Thank you, Maria. We'll see you soon. Quick break.